4.61, and then 4.22. So I've just literally put all of the adjusted Z scores into a column of data. And I've done this because I want to get exact p-values because I'm going to have to adjust the p-value uh, to control a type 1 error rate. In this case, I've done, you've actually done 12 different analyses here. And so the p-value of 0 0.05 needs to be adjusted by those 12 analyses. So you'd go 0 0.05 divided by 12. And so your adjusted p-value is now 0 0.0042. But I don't have p-values associated with any of my residuals. So I'm, this is what I'm doing now is to make the adjustment to get those p-values. And there are different ways of doing this. And I think the simplest way to do it is to transform these z-scores into actual chi-square values. And the way you would do that is you just have to actually multiply the z-scores by each other because that is actually the relationship between z the z distribution and the chi-square distribution is simply a function of multiplying them together. Chi-square doesn't have any um, negative values. It only has positive values. You can almost think of chi-square as z-square. That's the association between the distributions. So now I've got chi-square values and it's easy to use. so I've just literally transformed these z values into chi square values and now I want to get exact p values or exact estimates or precise estimates of p values for each one of these chi square values which corresponds to each one of the cells within my uh large contingency table analysis so I'm going to transform and compute and there's a function in SPSS that allows you to calculate p-values for chi-square values. So I'm going to go p-value. It's my target vari variable. And it's a sp very specific function in uh, SPSS. Uh, it's not there. Where is it? Oh, there we go. Significance. So you go into function group significance and st significance chi-square. So you double click on that and put that into the numeric expression. And what it wants is a quantity and a degree of freedom. And in this case, the quantity is actually in our chi-square column. So all our chi-square values are in there. So we want to put that there and then specify the degrees of freedom, which is equal to 1 in this case. And what SPSS is going to do is calculate p-values for me for each one of those chi-square values. So we can see that the p for a chi-square of 18.66, which really is a z-score of negative 4.32, is p equal 0 0.00000156. So let's look at this from a decimal place. It's bigger. And we can see here p equal 0 0.00002. And then this p-value here is very much not significant. And what I need to do is compare these p-values to the adjusted Bonferroni corrected p-value of 0 0.0042. So this adjusted uh, z-score for this scale, the first one is definitely, you know, it's statistically significant. It's well beyond the 0 0.0041, but this one is not. And we can look at each cell to find out which ones are significant and which ones are not. And we can see that most of where the significance is happening is in that last column of upper class. It's not happening in the mid-level of classes. It's uh, happening f between lower and upper. We can actually see in here that as mentioned, we know that these two are statistically significant because they're beyond 1.96. But once you need to do the Bonferroni adjustment, you need to get the exact p-values. And that's how you get them here. And then you can compare them against your Bonferroni corrected p-value. This allows you to tell a story associated with your contingency table analysis. So you do the overall chi-square analysis and then look at the adjusted 
z values associated with each cell, ch change those into chi-square values, and then estimate the p-values, compare against the Bonferroni corrected p-value. And then you uh, can interpret your analysis. Now, I think this is a quite a nifty way of going about this. Rather than doing a whole bunch of different 2 by 2s after you do om your omnibus analysis, it's not efficient to do that. If you need a reference for this procedure, I think one of the first people to do something like this is uh, Beasley. And this is in Google Scholar that you can find it. Uh, and you can see that uh, you can get a citation by clicking the cite section, which I think is a cool little tool in Google Scholar. You just have to click on find the paper in Google Scholar and then click on cite. And then you can see this Beasley paper in APA format if you wanted it in that form or format or MLA. So Beasley Schumacher 1995 is a paper you could cite for this procedure. You could also cite a more recent paper where um, different approaches to looking at the adjusted versus the unadjusted Z uh, values is uh, examined. And so that is in uh, the Educational and Psychological Measurement Journal. And that's by Garcla P. Perez. Uh, and uh, so that's the second paper you could use as a citation for this procedure. Uh, so that's how you do a, I think that's a good way to do postdoc analysis in the chi-square case. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you next time.